Let them kill us all and we'll stand and watch Well, brother, that ain't for me I'll be running and jumping and skipping and bopping When they blow me to smithereens Hello lovelies, uh, this Sunday we played Fallout 2D20 and other than a bit of a tinker here and there doing some solo combats and situation modelling and so on it's the first time I've actually brought a 2D20 game successfully to the table it's a little bit clunky and gauging the difficulties and how to make rulings and adaptations on the fly is a bit tricky. Learning the levers and ways to increase or decrease difficulty, give bonuses or penalties, setting how many successes, all of that, it's all a, a little bit tricky. It's not a particularly intuitive system, I find. Uh, the flow of action points is a little bit odd too and a bit difficult to keep track of especially when playing online when you don't have a bunch of tokens to use uh, I was worried characters might feel a little bit too incompetent um, which is a common complaint <laughs> recently with games given that your max uh, stat plus skill with a tarting character uh, tarting with a starting character is nine uh, but with the action points, me being a bit lenient for the first session, it, it all seemed to go okay. Um, since this is more than a one-shot, uh, it'll be interesting to see how the characters develop through the game and level up. Uh, they're already not far off the next level, so we might see some leveling up next session, uh, which is in two weeks. Our heroes, uh, uh, I say that loosely, are members of Vault 501. So, yeah, ignore your meta knowledge of the Fallout setting for a moment. Uh, this is a grand vault with room to house some 14,000 citizens. Big enough that things are structured a little bit uh, differently internally. In a way, quite reminiscent of pre war America. The overseer is more like a presidential figure, subject to elections. Um, and there's enough people cooped up in the vault to require that vault security operate a bit more like a police department rather than mere guards and peacekeepers. So there are actual vault security detectives, which one of the characters is. So it's 200 years or so after the bombs. They were meant to come out much earlier but couldn't for one reason or another. And after several delays because of those problems, a select though odd group of vault dwellers have been selected to be the first pioneers to stick their heads above ground, to leave, to investigate. Our first group consists of a vault scouts troop leader, a vault security detective and of all things a kindergarten teacher. Uh, perhaps they assume that people out in the wastelands will have no education whatsoever and will need to be communicated with like children, who knows. Uh, other pioneer teams may of course join them in time and they may make some friends along the way. So either one of those is an, an excuse for bringing in other players. It took shockingly long <laughs> for the group to realise after they emerged from their vault that their vault sits in almost the very middle of a huge atomic crater which is still rather lively with radiation yeah, physics in fallout never really had to make much sense uh, nor did other things like the amount of food and so on that you can still scavenge from the pre-war uh, after poking around the remnants of exposed sections of their vault in the bottom of the crater and worryingly a collapsed section of the vault full of much looted computer banks uh, they eventually realized that they were being constantly irradiated and climbed up out of the pit to execute their first mission which was to find and repair a nearby satellite uplink that should allow their vault to contact other grand vaults around the world and to re-establish connection and communication with the doubtless victorious and triumphant american government they found the dish uh, and some mutated woodland. Um, the building, the uh, sort of air, con air traffic control tower that also has the dish on it, uh, was being used as a shelter and a farm building by a family of slightly inbred mutants named the Troutons. 
and they're weirdly huge mutant cows. So it turns out this is now a small settlement on a dying trade route called Dish. Uh, it's also the site of a low-powered shortwave radio station having been converted from its original usage as a satellite uplink. With a little bit of persuasion and distraction, uh, the DJ was successfully convinced or bypassed to let them mess with his jerry-rigged radio contraption. Uh, but the, the dish is currently missing some necessary technical parts. So armed with the CAD CAM holotapes from the DJ's uh, little stash, um, they made their way out and around the crater with having enough sense not to dip back into it, uh, all the way around to a mostly wrecked and looted industrial park on the opposite side of the crater. There, in the midst of a looted car park of weirdly small cars, uh, they encountered Marshall, uh, the sales slash mechanic robot of Marshall's showroom, mechanics and body shop. The robot was a little odd, I mean he has been poodling around for two centuries, but seemingly friendly, he just endlessly wanted to sell them cars or parts, until they uncovered that the robot was in fact completely deranged and had been trying to use human and animal parts, having already collected all the car parts in the area. They were at least able to escape to find the factory that they needed uh, with its intact machines and to run off a couple of bits of technical gubbins to fix up the dish. So that's where we're picking up next time with them heading back to dish to hopefully get the damn thing working and to put their vault back in touch with any other surviving vaults or the US government if it still exists. So that's, that's where we'll pick up in a couple of weeks. I will probably blog some of the stuff that I have made up or created along the way uh, over on postmortemstudios.wordpress.com if you're interested that should appear in the next few days or so take care see you soon Zang At the end of World War II the Axis and the Allies went to war with A-bombs until nobody was left to fight in this atomic wasteland, a new breed of rockabilly hero arises. From the gleaming domes of Science City Zero to the sleazy roller derbies of Vegas and the Sky Fortress of the Fourth Reich, there's a new world for the taking. 45. Psychobilly Retropocalypse. Available at lulu.com and RPG Now.